Well, you may have seen in newspapers uh, this morning lots of pictures of the greatest, Muhammad Ali, the man who floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee. The legendary boxer, he is 70 today. What sort of boxer was he? What sort of man is he? Well, we've got boxing promoter Frank Warren joining us this morning. Very good morning to you, Frank. Um, I, suppose, I, I suppose let's start with your boxing head on. You, you're still working with lots of young boxers, boxers very much at their peak. Do they still talk about this man? They certainly do, and in the age that you can buy DVDs and watch films of Muhammad Ali, they are still inspired by him. His uh, style and the way he fought and, you know, what he brought to, the, what he brought to boxing and what he brought to sport. I mean, you, I suppose you, you'd have been unemployed if you were working with Muhammad Ali because you didn't need much promoting, did well, you? Well, he was the most promotable fighter, I think, of all time. If you speak to any of the uh, old boxing journalists from those days, all they talk about is how accessible he was. In this day and age, it's very hard to get near sportsmen. I mean, you probably know that yourself going through agents and whatnot, but if he, he didn't have a whole, an audience, he wasn't happy. And he would sit and talk for hours to journalists and people because he was a people person. I mean, looking at pictures there with, uh, obviously, M Mr Cooper there and uh, Muhammad Ali with beautiful looks, great athlete, but he did wrap up a few people the wrong way, didn't he? The first fight against Cooper in, in this country, I mean, the, he was getting booed. He was booed into the ring, he was booed out of the ring. And then the second time round, they weren't too happy with, with the decision. But then he put on a charm offensive because he was one of those type of characters. He played up to the audience. You know, he, he, he could be the pantomime villain. He could also be a bit dark at times with people. You know, he, he certainly had a real bad... Um, a bad experience, or not him a bad experience, but he gave Joe Frazier a real bad experience. And Joe Frazier, who passed away last year, never forgave him for that. But he was, uh, you know, he, he, he just charmed everybody when he wanted to. He could, he could just do that. He could just turn it on and do that to people. Well, he's, he's 70 today. I mean, obviously uh, suffering very badly with Parkinson's. I mean, what difference has he made to your sport and what made sport in general, do you think? I think in sport, he's probably the most iconic sportsman of the 20th century. He's, you know, he's so well respected, so well thought of. I think he won the BBC uh, Sports Personality of the Century. As far as boxing's concerned, uh, it was a bit in the doldrums. Sonny Liston was this uh, ex-convict who was a champion, uh, you know, wasn't really setting the world like a, a light as far as crowds are concerned. He came on the scene, but it took him a few years to, to actually establish himself. He had to go abroad. He wasn't liked in America. And then suddenly, after the, the when he got his, when he came back after being banned from boxing, the new era of TV dawned, and he then became a massive pay-per-view fighter. In those days, um, it was, you know, big fights around the world were broadcast into cinemas, and the same thing into the States. You'd have the live event, then the event put into cinemas, which turned the sport into a, as far as generating income from sound, into, into, a, different, into a different league altogether. And he, he inspired that. After the Olympics, he obviously wanted to make a difference, talking about putting black people in, on equal terms in sport and, and in America and across the world. Does he still have that influence, do you think? Does he still have that uh, influence in, in making that change? People still say, Muhammad Ali did it, we can do it. Well, I think he did, and he certainly was one of the pioneers. I mean, he, you know, that time I remember, the, you know, one of the Olympic Games that you had the Black Power Movement, all the guys gave the salute after they won medals. But he was the one that, that actually did it. He, he, he actually was the one who stood up, one of the first people to stand up as a, as a sportsman and say, you know, something has to be done for the black people in America, we're not standing for this anymore. And he, he did that, and he was, he was reviled by a certain, certain section of America. But certainly in this country at that stage, he'd become a, a, a really uh, well-liked character. I mean, I think the British Boxing Board of Control were the only organisation, when he was stripped of his title, to not actually you know, to not say he weren't world champion, you know, he had to lose his title in the ring rather than through political methods. Well, Frank, thank you very much indeed. Lovely, lovely to talk about uh, a man, obviously still very much with us and mm. still has that presence. I mean, if you think, think about 13-year-olds, 10-year-olds mm. going into the gym and yeah, still people amazing. knowing still who he is. Yeah. Yeah. And some Absolutely. amazing photographs yeah. in the newspapers yeah. still. Well, we're showing some more, aren't we, a little later on, and highlights from his career and things, so, yes. About half past eight, I think. About half past eight, yeah. Right. Thanks, Frank. Pleasure. Uh, the time is now 22 minutes to 8. Speed